Amen. Anyone wanted to um, share an angelical experience? If not, and you would like to comment on the scripture that we read on, is there a question that you may have? We read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 from verse 42. You may do so because time is really speeding away from us here. Amen. 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 Um, I want to share an experience. Is that Dillion? Yeah, this is Dillion. Hi, Dillion. Greetings. Lovely to have you. Please share your experience. Um, it's not an angelic experience. It's more like an Holy Spirit experience. Even mm -hmm. better. Uh, I told my dad and Auntie Rose's story before. Yeah. Um, I guess I just want to share it with you all too. Yes. Um, when I, I, you know, I grew up in the church because my father has been preaching all his life. And uh, yeah. um, when I was 12 years old, my father let us, me and my sister, got baptized. Yeah. But I. I didn't really believe in God at that time. Because there's so many religions out there. I was saying, how do I know that my this religion is true? That Jesus Christ really does exist. This mm -hmm. may be a fake religion like mm -hmm. all the other religions out there. Because yeah. you have to do this, that, that, all these other religions. So after I was baptized at 12, um, I said to I said to my I said to God I said God if you are real show show yourself to me mm -hmm. uh, show yourself to me if you are real because I'm not gonna worship a fake God yeah all right so um after a while he didn't answer me immediately after a while mm -hmm. one early morning yeah. And I feel a presence over me, like the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit was over me one morning. And I, I'm a person, I'm a late sleeper. I don't wake up early at all. And that morning, God woke me up early in the morning with the, the anointing over me. And he brought me outside to the most beautiful morning I ever seen. The, the sun was perfect and beautiful. The wind was blowing. Just right, the sky was clear and pretty. Yeah. And God, and I heard the anointing, I heard this, the voice that God said to me. He said, look at the sky, how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. Look at the trees, look at the birds. And I was watching some birds flying by. And yeah. he said, everything, mm -hmm. he said to me, everything is perfect in its place and it's in its order and in its alignment. Mm -hmm. the, the universe is perfectly design and in place everything my, my body is perfectly made in his image and he said then i hear him say the last word he said the heaven and the heard declare who i am yeah. I, I was just open up open up and ever since then i've never doubted the existence of of, of god ever again ever again yeah. mm -hmm. amen, amen. It was amen. the most um, amazing experience I've ever had with the anointing. And once you've had that experience, you'll never be the same again. Never. Yes. Never. Yes. Amen. I've had yes, a because, Yeah, go on. Because, because many times, even because of that experience, yeah. That's what keep me grounded. Mm -hmm. Because that, that the enemy can't fool me or take me away completely mm -hmm. because of yes. that experience. Many mm -hmm. times I hear people say that God don't exist. He doesn't exist at all. How could God exist and all these evils in the world? Mm -hmm. But I know because of that experience that God exists and the devil can't take that away from me. Mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. I have, mm -hmm. I I have, I have a firm belief and understanding of who God is because of that experience. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. And I often say to people when they 
asked the question, um, how could so and so happening if God exists? And I say to them, we are not yet in paradise. When we get in paradise with the Lord at the end of time, then things will be perfect. But for now, we are going through. We're going through what we're going through because we're not yet in paradise. If things were perfect, then we wouldn't know, we wouldn't want to know, or we wouldn't have the Lord Jesus Christ come and die on the cross of Calvary for us. And I've had a similar experience where things are shown to me, and when I look and see everything in place, I know for sure that I've gone in heaven, I've put it, everything together, because nothing is evolved, there's no big bang that kept the galaxies up in place, there's no big bang that gave mm -hmm. enough to get on this planet so we can walk freely and talk without floating and bumping into one another. I know for sure that God has put it into place and when he's ready, he will come again. That is a beautiful experience you have, Alien. Mm. Absolutely beautiful and it will stay with you and pass down to the next generation and to the next one because you've had an encounter with the Holy Ghost which is coming out from God himself. Through the Lord. Amen. That is beautiful. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else that would like to share something with us? Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. God bless you all, um, every one of you. Um, I'm glad to be with you tonight. And um, I'm, I'm really glad to hear the testimony of Delhi and my son. Um, I'm really proud of him. Um, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he old, he will not depart from it. And this young man, Delian, as a baby, he went to church with me as a baby, all the way up until he was about 15 or 16, when he went to America, somewhere there. And I'm glad yeah. that he grew up in the church, and, you know, the Lord yeah. has revealed himself to him. And he's had an encounter with God. Which is wonderful. Yeah, I think he told me that yes. happened to him some time ago. And I said, yeah. blessed be God. You know? Amen. What, what we have to see is that um, he actually said, Lord, if you exist, show me. Yes. Yeah. Show me. Yeah. And so everyone who wants to, you know, it's no saying that God doesn't exist. And uh, what, if this is happening, ask God to show you. If you seriously want to yes. know God, ask him to show you. Yes. And if you ask him yes. sincerely to show you who, that he exists, he will. Yes. And Amen. so that, that is what happened. Hallelujah. Um, praise God. That's what happened to my son. I'm glad. I'm really happy um, to see that he's, you know, he's have a heart to serve God. And, you know, he was baptized Amen. from an early age. And, you know, God is with him. Or else, if he wasn't, uh, he wouldn't be on here tonight. Praise Amen. the Lord. But I would like to share. I would like to share my testimony of what I've experienced um, many years ago in Jamaica. I think it's about 1980, which is a um, good time ago now, if we think about it. Um, when before I became a Christian, um, I was seeking God, of course, and um, I, I visited many different churches, many different nominations, and I just couldn't find a church but one day i went to a church that's before even delian was born i yeah. went to a church and i i was invited to a pentecostal church and when i got there i just felt something moving and i said this is it's like a different world i said wow i didn't know people could be happy in church you know, yeah. people was rejoicing, and people was under the anointing, and you know, so uh, the church was packed. Outside, there was people wanted to come in, they couldn't come in, not like today. People was outside all around the church because there was no room in the church Amen. for people. And the power of God was there, and the anointing was there, and you could feel uh, something I've never felt before, and I, you know, I was at the, about 25 years old. I was young, but you know, I felt something, and and there the pastor was invited me. Came down, never knew her. She came down, an old lady. She came down, and said, "Would you like us to pray for you?" And I said, "Yes." So she took me down 
to the altar and the bishop came down lay hands on me and I felt an anointing as I've never experienced that before you know just the Holy Ghost was just moving and I felt the whole of my body was thrilled because I felt something happened there and eventually yeah. there I was I received the gospel I was baptized I received the Holy Ghost but even before I received the Holy Ghost I had I, I, I encounter also which um I told my son about it as well. Um, I never realized that there was darkness, that there was evil. I had no idea at that time because I was a young Christian, obviously. And yeah. I experienced darkness that I never knew such darkness existed. And I experienced um, movements of darkness and you know, which, you know, I wouldn't be able to go through everything, but we, I, ha I was living in a house and um, I could not sleep because there was something there. There was something there. So we asked the church, uh, the pastor asked the church to come and pray and they came and pray and that power would not leave. Yeah. So there was another church. So we invited the other church to come over, the main church, and they came over and the bishop did not come, but he sent four men. He laid hands on them. And when they came to the house, there was so much disturbance. There was things thrown on top of the house. I don't know what, you know. And so when they were praying, actually praying, one of the men that came actually accosted, accosted the evil that was there and talking to it so it was all there the church was in the house and the way you know we sang and yeah. pray and then you know all of a sudden he started to talk to the spirit so there is an evil spirit that exists yes. there yes. is an evil spirit but because this okay. these young men was under the anointing of the holy ghost they could yeah. they could arrest that spirit Yes. And he arrested yes. the spirit and said, who, are, who sent you? Why are you here? Yes. And then the spirit begins to speak to him. Now, we could hear him speak to the spirit, but we could not hear the spirit speaking to him. Yeah. The whole church was there praying. We could not hear the spirit speaking to him. But he said what the spirit said to him. Yeah. So the spirit said to him, gave him a name. And he, yes. he knew nothing. I bought a property I bought a piece of land from a man and that man must have done something you know whatever I don't know some evil thing uh. witchcraft I don't know what it is but it was very it was awesome and so he called out the name of the man and we realized that something well everybody knew the yeah. man in the district that he was an evil man anyway but he yeah. arrested the spirit the thing is he arrested the spirit and when he arrested uh. the spirit he discharged that spirit. And I'm saying that evil has power. Darkness has yes. power. Yes. Evil has power. Darkness has power. But I, yes. I, I as, as my son came to the understanding, I came to the understanding that the power of God, the power of light is far greater. Far greater. Amen. Than the power of darkness. But there is a Amen. power of darkness. Yes. There is a power of darkness, and I, as a yes. young novice, didn't know, didn't know Christ, didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know what was what. I just know things was happening around me, and I don't know what yeah. what to do, you know. But it's yes. a good thing I knew the church. So when he pray, when he when he talked to the spirit, he discharged the spirit. He says, yes. "Go." He says, "Go." I discharge you now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. I discharge you in the name of Jesus. And when he uh, when that spirit was leaving, the whole of the window and the house tear open. It was like the whole window, the front window of the house tear open. Like you know, it, the window fell out. Uh, yeah. Tear out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that is my encounter. And yeah. You know, as my son said, that experience he had has made it, given a conviction. Yes. 
Yes. And because I have seen the power of the Holy Ghost to dispel darkness, the power of darkness, principality. The Bible tells us about principalities and power of darkness. Yes. There is yes. a power of darkness. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that what is happening in the world today is all because of the power of darkness. Amen. The condition of this world today is all because of the power of darkness. The devil is the yes. prince. The devil is the prince of this world. The devil is the ruler of this world. But God, God Almighty, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, is supersede, supersede all the powers of darkness. Amen. There, you know, no principality, no power, no demon. This, we have a song that says, Tell me who can stand before us no when one we go can. in Jesus' name. No one. No one can stand before us. Not the forces of hell. Not all the demons on earth. When we go in Jesus' name. So that is my spiritual encounter, which yes. I will never forget. I will never forget when the power of the Holy Ghost comes and arrests those demons and discharge them in the name of Jesus. And not only that, not only that, I want to remind us that the power is in, there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Without a doubt. We cannot forget the fact that there's power in the name of Jesus. Very important that we know that there's power in the name of Jesus. Demons, mm -hmm. devils, they fear the name of Jesus. Yes, they do. So we thank God for his name. We thank God for the Amen. power that is in his name. And through the power of the Amen. Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Amen. I will stop Amen. there. I will stop there. But God bless you, my brethren. Let us continue bless to you. be faithful, trusting in the Lord. We are on the right side. Just stay on the right side. And the right side Amen. is Jesus. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Minister Thompson. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Is there anyone else at all would like to share an experience as well? Brother Kenneth gave his after Minister Thompson, and I share mine as well. I don't want to leave anybody else. It's a very important night to me tonight because we're here, as I said, to edify and to strengthen one another with our experiences and our thoughts. And we're here learning. We're learning and we're teaching. We're learning from one another and we're teaching one another for the next level for 2023 because we need to go up levels and we need to make sure that we are more than for having the Lord Jesus Christ on our side and the power of the Holy Ghost in us. Let us unite one with another so we can be victorious for 2023 and win souls to the kingdom of God. Because there are souls out there that are dying that need to hear a word to change your destination. Amen, saints. Anyone else would like to share a word? Experience with that. Please go ahead. Amen. Before I wrap up from First Corinthians chapter 15, from verse 42 to the end. Anyone else? This is your turn. Amen. Let the power fall on me, my Lord. Let the power fall on me. Let the power from heaven fall on me. Let the power fall on me. Let the fire fall on me, my Lord. Let the fire fall on me. Let the fire from heaven fall on me. Let the Holy Ghost fall on me. Oh, 
back to share with us this evening. Amen. Sister McLean, did you want to say something? I just no, no, Minister Kelsey, thank you. Okay, excellent. I just I'm thought... just I'm just listening. Amen, amen. Praise God. Okay. Uh, my heart have been blessed by our brother Thompson's son. It was a young man, you know, to amen. hear his experience. Yeah. The Lord has showed himself strong to him that he is God yes. and amen. he is real. And amen. From the, um, I know that from then he have that firm belief that there is a God and nobody can't tell him that there is not a God That's that right. exists who oh, right. the universe Amen. bless the Lord um, his testimony really touches me you know I'm listening to that Amen. young guy Amen. Yes. he really touched me and Amen. may the Lord bless him yes. with your every ego and continue to lift the banner high and tell yes. his young companions about the Lord That's right. and how good and he's faithful Amen. And he's true and he's ever living and he's coming back again, you know, Amen. one day. And if you do not repent, you know, hell shall be their portion, Amen. you know. May the Lord continue to bless you, Dalan, Dylan, and you, you know, because it's not many young boys at your age would at Amen. this time be, you know, in the company of, you know, you just say, grow you is maybe the youngest one here on yes, the um, yes, yes. Amen. on the on the, the zoom the here. Zoom, the zoom. But the Lord bless you because the young man I call on you because you are You're strong. strong. That's right. And may the Lord continue to bless you and be a light in the darkness. Be a light in the world wherever you go. Be a psalm, the apostle Paul, you know, to spread the good news. And Peter, be brave, be strong, be yes, bold. Yes. And speak with boldness as and utterance. May Amen. the Lord bless you. And also your dad who have started this, you know, blessed journey. And, you know, you could have reframed, but there's a seed that is planted in you. And that seed is germinate and it is growing and it's turning big branch bearing fruit. Amen. So Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Bless you. Um, I, I think um, because um, Dalian, you've had um, that experience. I'm, I'm quite sure that um, other special things have happened in your life for God to actually come forward in such a way for you. Mm. I'm, I'm quite sure there are other things that happen or about to Maybe more than what has happened already, but 2023 should be a year for you where you will um, according to the um, the moving of the Holy Spirit at the moment. 2023 should be a year of power for you because having had such experience, it's not something that is down upon you lightly. There is um, there is uh, let's see, there is an event, let's see, an evangelistic. Um, calling for you to walk and maybe you might have to go i don't know if you've studied already you may have to go into study either theology theology or ministry uh, one of those so you can move to the next level with um what you want to do for the lord Amen. in the ministry nothing is wrong with that so you can still do your job that you're doing and you can still do it our time. We, we have done our words we have had our degree in that and I, so I think for the 2023 is, is a path that you can think about for the ministry. It doesn't mean you have to go and be a pastor in a church. It just simply means that you will be equipped in a way that you will get into um, places you never thought you'd get into because of the credentials that you hold. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I, I do hope I'm uh, making sense in yes. what I'm saying here. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And I, and I hope you understand fully, but according to the movement of the Holy Spirit tonight, that's what I'm getting for you. Amen. 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 Right. Um, 
the anointing is so strong that the Lord is actually saying that is the path you have to think about taking for 2023. And as I said, it doesn't have to be full time. It can be on a part time basis and you can still do the work that you have to do or you're doing. But that's something you need to embark upon to go forward in the ministry for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise God. Praise Once I've got that bit done, I've done my part there. So um, there's no guilt left on me for not revealing that. Amen. Let's, Amen. let's have a look. Um, first Amen. coming to chapter 15, and we're looking at verse 42. And it's, 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 um, we need to go and read that for ourselves as well. And when we look at verse, um, from verse 42, it said, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Verse 43, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Verse 44, it is so natural. It's sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual Natural body. body. Amen. So that's how the body will be raised. You know, the um, corrupt will remain corrupt and the incorrupt yes. will, will be raised in corrupt. So if you died in the Lord, you may die in your natural body, but because you died in the Lord, because you live a life for him that pleases him, when your body is raised, it is raised in corrupt. Amen. It is raised up. Uh, Immortal. Amen. Amen. You're no longer mortal. You're not immortal. You have a body that cannot die. That's what it's actually saying. Uh, body. All resurrected body will be immortal because you have a body <laughs> in a heavenly place and you have a body that is heading for the lake of fire. Amen. So all bodies also will be immortal, but one will be heading to um, destruction of one will be heading towards heaven. Amen. Amen. Um, we remember that hell is now prepared, was prepared for the devils and the fallen angels yes. because we make a choice. And if we choose, if we choose to to um to serve him, then of course we're going to end up there and reap whatever. Oh, oh. Amen. So I, I want to make sure that everybody understands. I'm just going to put this on charge so that I won't run out for the next few minutes that I'm talking to you. Amen. So uh, it said all resurrected bodies will be immortal, but they will possess different degree of glory. Our bodies are so corruption. Raised in corruption, so in dishonest and raised in glory. That's what it's actually saying. So in weakness, raised in power. So Amen. actually raised spiritually. And there is a Greek word, there's a Greek word for that, the corruption part, and it's Pythora, that is the Greek word for that. And also, um, there's another Greek word for that as well. Let me have a look to make sure that I'm giving the right one because I. I want to make sure that you have a theological eye of that as well. And um, it's a thought here, which is immortal, it is translated into incorruption, refers to resurrected bodies. That's what it is. It's immortal, a body that cannot die. Right now, we are mortals. We are because we have a natural body, and this body can get sick and it can die. And that's when some people say, well, how can you say that you're saved? How can you say you're a minister? How can you say you're an evangelist? How can you say that you are a missionary unless and you're sick? Because the body that, oh, was, I was, I was, was, yet. The body that was given to us is a natural body. It came from yeah, the dust. We can get sick so from the dust. We get yeah. from the dust. We can get we can get so we can get sick. It's like it doesn't matter whether you are a bishop or archbishop. Every day you have to clean your body. You still have to take a shower. Yeah. Yes. You clean your body. You still have to comb your hair. You still have to get your clothes. Uh, not try to not you know, Things are just mm -hmm. they are natural. When yeah. we have spiritual body and when our clothes is changed to a spiritual one, those clothing will not be worn out because they are spiritual ones. But for now, 
the natural man in his natural body coming from the back to we are mortal, we are not yet in paradise, we are just passing through this world. We are pressure. Amen. Amen. So I remember that you are from a royal kingdom which is not of this world, not a kingdom which is not the monarchy that we can see with the natural eye, like Queen Elizabeth II. Our kingdom is not of this world and the royal is not limited. Once we have the crown of glory and life on our head, we have got it for eternity. This, the queen, when the queen passed away last year, she had to be leaving her crown and her scepter behind. Yeah. Because it was from here. But the one yeah. that will be given will stay with us for eternity because it's not from here. And that's why the scripture tells us that the things that we are seeing are natural things. But the things that we cannot see are divine, they are eternal. We have a man which cannot be seen with the natural eyes. And that's why the Lord don't read your body signal. He don't need to know what your body is saying. He needs to know what your heart is saying. Amen? Amen. That's why God reads the heart. The heart that cannot be seen with the natural eye. Amen. Amen. So here I'm telling you that this is how our body will be. We are from the dust, we go to the dust. But on resurrection day, on the day when we come back, when the, Lord the, the trump of the Lord shall sound, as Testimonium tell us, and also that talks about in Revelation, we shall be changed from mortal to immortality, from yes. natural to supernatural. Yes. One that cannot die. Amen. One that cannot die because we have new body. And that is why on when the disciples saw the Lord Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, the body that the Lord Jesus Christ took on, it was a body that was not from here. That's why they saw the light. Mm. That's why they saw the light. Because the Lord Jesus took on a body. He was telling us about the past, present, and future. Amen. That was, that's what was there. But let's just get back to this. I don't want to complicate matters, really. And there is a necessity for a resurrection. And verse 45 says, And so it is written, The first man Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Amen. Amen. We need to look at that and to make sure that what we're getting here is telling us that the Lord Jesus Christ came and done away with the law, done away with the natural stuff, and he came to fulfill everything that is spiritual that God has in store for us mm -hmm. so he can be redeemed back to the Lord, back to God, to have a relationship with him as he had in the beginning in the Garden of Eden with Adam. Amen. Are there any questions at all before I, I want to make, I want to make a comment? Okay, please go ahead. Verse 50. Now the I say, where did you The flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, neither do it corruption in everyday in corruption. Flesh and blood can't enter in the kingdom of God. This natural body can't enter. That's right. This natural body is subject to pain, heartache, toothache, cancer, choke. It can't in the kingdom of God. What is it that we're going to have in the kingdom of God? Of God. The spiritual body that's going to have in the world. It's a spiritual body. It's a body that's going to have forever. And so, so this is made, made up. up. And this, and this expensive color. And this, and this tattoo and all, and all these fun, fun things, things. These nice things are not going to be able to get out of All this spread that you have inside of you, that you are going to get in the God kingdom. And this one will change. And the 21 verse, we all, I show you a mystery. We shall all sleep. But we shall be changed in a moment, 22, 22, in a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. At the last trumpet, the trumpet shall sound. 
and the and the dead in shall cry shall rise in the comfortable and we shall be chained for this comfortable must put on in comfortable and this mortal shall put on immortality for this first for the travel again for this comfortable must put on it called devil and this mortal shall put on immortality so now miss mortality is going to be a spiritual body Amen. you have no pain no sickness you have no sorrows no heartache no food milk nothing we are in a we are everlasting life yeah. so these are things we need to think about or no home. And the same point I put here in the first place. We're gonna take you out of this place. One day, so very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We are going to see the king. Everybody, no fret. Don't worry. Don't think about nothing. Just fix your eyes on Jesus. And we got the nothing to come. We are not here. And it's going to be a happy time. So God bless you all. Hope to see you on Wednesday night at the hand of Sister Kelsey. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. So, we can see here there is a necessity for the resurrection. We have a natural body and the natural body goes back to the dust. But it is necessary that when the body is raised when the trump of God is sound, you need to have a new body. Mm. For your new home, for your new yeah. home, and as Pastor said, the, that body will not be able to cry. It won't be able to get sick. It will not be able to die because mm. it will no longer be from the dust. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed. Um, those of us who sometimes watch films, but for the past few years, I have noticed, especially the the films that have got something scientifically in it that everything now is dust. Mm. I mean, um, maybe Daniel and I've watched the Marvel's film, you, know, you may see Avatar, and you may see um, Superman, you may see others, but everything now that when it passes on is just dust that's left. I've noticed that in quite a lot of films. When the person passed away, all you see is just dust. And they it means that mankind are learning that we are from the dust and they're trying to find a way that they can live again. But the only way we can live again is when we live in Christ in God. Amen. That's the yeah. only way. You have to be living through Christ in God in order to raise again with the immortal body. It doesn't matter what good work you do here. It doesn't matter what healing, what prophecy you give here. It doesn't matter how much you love somebody. If you don't acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and go through him to get to God, we will not be able to make it on good works. Because many people have worked for the Lord. They don't serve him. Yeah. If, if first give their money, to help the poor and to help <laughs> but they're not worshipping God they can't be served but work alone cannot get you there otherwise the rich could have made it and those who are poor would have been left we need to make sure that we're serving the true and living God I'm going to finish there because this is just a, a synopsis on how the dead will be raised and now we know that we die naturally, but when we raise, we will raise a supernatural way so that our body will face our maker. Amen. And the bodies are raised with different glory. Remember that. If you choose to serve Satan, you will reap his glory, which is hell, fire waiting. If you choose to continue serving the one and only true God, you will be raised in an incorruptible body, waiting to go into the celestial city, which we all have.
There's a song that says, for that city, pearly white city. I never turn back to this world anymore. There's a song that goes like that. I remember that song. My mom used to sing that song all the time. So saints, I just want to encourage you. Encourage you that the ultimate victory or a motive for Christian service. Therefore, my beloved brethren, the last verse, which is the ultimate victory for Christian service. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. Amen. We want to make sure we are steadfast in what we do so that God will reward us. And on that day, we'll hear, well done, our good and faithful servant. Amen. I'm just going to close there. May the Lord really bless you all. May his flesh upon you. Can I say something, please? May his glory rest and glow as you walk from day to day. May your heart be touched to know that your living will not be in vain. Yes, uh, Can I say something, please? Yes. Uh, because it's Sister Buckler, first time when she's training, what do you to do? Could you get the closing prayer, please? We can oh. practice. Yes, I'll, I can do that. Yes, yeah. my own. Yes. Amen. So we look forward to seeing everyone. Was there any question before we close? Because um, sometimes there are opportunities and some people may feel a little bit shy. If you have a question and I can answer it, uh, I will try to do my best for you. Is there a question that is on someone's heart? Was there a thought that came to you that you'd like to hear a reflection on? Please. Amen. So everyone is, is quite happy. I'm so glad to share this fellowship with you all tonight. I am truly blessed with your testimonies and your experiences that you're shared. Truly, I am blessed. So blessed. And it will give me an opportunity even to dig deeper in the service to the Lord because I myself is learning. We never stop learning until the day we leave. Amen. And any, any archbishop will tell you this. No matter what position they have, they never stop learning until the day they leave. Because there's always new things to learn every day until the day you leave the earth. Amen. 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 So this time, we are going to ask um, Sister Butler to close us in a short prayer. Sister Butler, can you hear us? You can take your mute button off. It's off. Uh, mute button is not off, it's just on. Because that's insane. It's off now. Sister Buckler, please um, put us in a short prayer. She took it off and then she put it back on. Off now. Sister Buckler, please close us in a short prayer. God bless you. Sister Butler, can you hear us? I'm not sure she can hear us. So I will ask. I will ask um, Sister Rosie to please close us in a short prayer. Sister Rosie Thompson. Okay, good greetings. Yeah, I wasn't really sure which one, but if I mean, you can I call, it, I call the other Rosemary and I call you Rosie. Oh, uh, okay then, okay. Oh, Heavenly Father, I give thanks and praises. And I thank you for this evening. What a blessing it's been. And so much I've learned by listening to everything that was said. Lord, I pray that you continue to just bless this ministry. Bless Minister Kelsey, Pastor Winston, and all the brethren that's on here tonight. As well, Delian, the young one, the youngest one that's on here to, tonight, Lord. Mm, it's a blessing bless to have the young ones bless on as well. Because there's so many, their souls are going to hell. So, Lord, I pray yeah. 
bless him and keep him in your care. Lord, touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Bless everyone that's on here tonight. And I pray that they feel as blessed as I do, because I feel really blessed. I could listen to more. Lord, I pray that you cover each and every one with your anointing grace. As the week comes, Lord, I pray that you bless them as well. From Monday right through to the weekend again, that we'll come back on here again for more food, for more of the word, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the praise, I give you the glory and the honor through Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you. Um, we look forward to seeing you all again on Wednesday. So we can have that wonderful um, communion again. May the Lord bless you all. And Amen. it was, as I said tonight, was absolutely wonderful and it was lovely sharing all the experience. Thank you, Brother Ken, for even sharing that with us, the encounter of um, angelical host in his home. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. At this time, we will pronounce the benediction. And now may the saving grace of all Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the Father, of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest remain the blood of us all, was now and evermore. Amen. 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 It is lovely to have you on as a young man. God bless you. Sister, um, God bless you all. God bless you.